Hello everyone, this is Kevin from Westwood Moto and we're here today to take a look at our Hussar 3035 Adventure Kit as well as the contents inside and go through the installation process on how to get the kit adapted onto any sort of racking system on the market. Alright, so let's go through what's inside the box. First off, there will be two dry bags. This is for the 35 liter. Let's place it aside. And there should be another one here. This is for the 30 liter. Aside from the dry bags, you will be met with two hanging baskets. This will be the basket system that the bags will go into. Put that aside. Now there will be two accessory bags that can be mounted to the 3035 on the side of it, or a lot of people choose to mount this on the side of crash cars up front. There is always going to be a warranty card. Our, all our products come with a one year limited warranty. Same thing, one year limited warranty. And content inside. There will be all the mounting, the complete mounting kit with brackets inside. Let's open it and see everything that's included. There will be one quick release clamp, three hanging brackets for each side. So that's one side. Let's put that aside first. And this is the other quick release bracket as well as three hanging bra brackets for the other side. There's also going to be two push rods per side to push against to push against the left and right side of the pannier system to prevent the whole system from rocking back and forth once installed. The only thing left inside the accessories bag here are zip ties that are used to keep the hanging basket in place as well as two keys and an installation X key. So all the tools that are needed for install aside from scissors to cut the zip ties are included. So this is empty. Now put that aside. This is our main two bags here. This will be the 35 liter. And this is the 30 liter. Two more things at the very bottom of the package that you'll find will be the two aluminum back weights that are also included in the kit for installation of the system. And that's it. Now to look at, let's look at the features of the 3035 kit first before we go into installation. Once you take the main bags themselves out of their storage compartment here, you'll see that the bag, every bag comes with a hard PP board. This PP board has Velcro, Velcro on three points of it. This will go inside the bag to make sure that it retains its semi-rigid structure. So let's open the bag and take a look. On the inside, you'll notice that it comes with backpack straps, which I will show you how these are installed or are stored when you're not using them later. And on the inside, you'll see that there are three points, left, right, and center for the PP board to stick onto using Velcro. Let's, see, let's push this apart and install the board. Make sure it's on the bottom. So left side goes in, other side, Velcro's on. Bottom, make sure it's in place. And that's how the PP board is installed. So once that's installed, the whole bag now has its full structure. And to roll it up, let's roll it up now quickly, tie it down on both sides, and we'll go through some, some features of the bag itself. The bag has a locking system on top, which allows you to use any sort of little chain locks to lock it against the back, the aluminum back plate itself, or onto any rack system that you have installed. Um, the bag, the 2023 model now has additional nylon protection on the corners of the bag that's facing outwards for that additional added protection. On the back, there's a hidden strap here. This panel here is stuck on using obviously two straps at the bottom and also a Velcro attachment here to protect against rubbing against the back plate as well as anything that's on the bike before. And inside here, you'll see a zipper. This zipper compartment is usually used by us to just store the backpack straps inside, right? So now the backpack straps are easily attached using clips. If you see here, take a look at the backpack straps. You have two clips on the top and two clips at the bottom. So for the top clip, let's just hang it through the, cross it through the two hooks at the top. That way. And once that's installed, you have two more clips at the bottom here go through the pre-arranged hooks at the bottom. 
Simple as that. The 30-35 kit can transform into a backpack. Again, when you're not using it, just remove them. It's quickly, it's really quickly, can really quickly come undone. And this whole backpack strap can just be stored behind the zippers at the back of the bag. Alrighty, so this is the example that I've shown here is using the 30 liter bag. The same applies to the 35 liter on the side here. And this whole system will be, can be pre-set up like this before we go on to installing the crippling system onto the bike on the side we have there. Let's move to the bike. So now moving to the bike, the model bike that we have here today is a 2023 Triumph Tiger 900 Rally Pro. Um, it's already has some aftermarket racks installed. Our system will adapt to any sort of racking system on the market that has this tubular form, a crossbar on the top and on the bottom. Now, I want to take this moment to show you how we have two different models of clamps. So depending on the kit that you purchase, it will be either be an 18 millimeter kit or a 19 millimeter kit because the racks on the market, they are different widths, different diameters. This here is a 19 millimeter. So we have here, if you look at the kit that you purchased, it will identify on the back of the clamp saying whether it's an 18 or a 19 millimeter quick release. So in this case, we'll be using the 19. So the first step to installing the quick release clamp onto the bike is to unlock it. Using the key included in the accessory kit, turn it counterclockwise, a full circle, and unplug it. Now you see that the push rod is out. This system is now unlocked. Before you put it on though, make sure that you take out the bottom two screws as they will prohibit in the way of getting the kit on. You can either loosen them a, a bit because you see how it's protruding there, it will prohibit it from getting onto the rack there. So I'll just loosen it out a bit. Now to get it on, make sure the screws are facing you and find the right place where you want the mount to be installed. Once that's in place, we can now fully remove all four screws. Now, once I have all the four screws removed, we can take the metal back plate and line it up to the mount places on the bracket there. So on the back plate, you'll notice that there's gaps on the top for allowing the attachment of the quick release clamp either to one side, in the middle, or to the other, off to the other side. Once it's in place, make sure you place in a screw. Let me get the screw onto the hex key here. Make sure you use the screw to hold it in place. And then you can find time to get all the four screws on, but don't tighten them just yet. That's two. That's three. And the last one. Now, once the basket, uh, once the back plate is on, you have the availability, availability to move it up or down, depending on how high you want the back plate to sit. Making sure that you do have room left on the on the locations, all the other three corners, to install the remaining three brackets on. So let's. Um, you see that the brackets themselves they are open ended, so they can just be hung on the back here. Make sure the screws are facing outward, and you can choose locations on the on the rack wherever you want to set it. And we have a lot of flexibility here, choosing, uh, making sure that you have it, you can have the system set up at the desired height. Now, before getting the last piece on, I wanted to make sure that we're clear that there are the two bolts that are on the hooks themselves, they're different lengths. The one on the top is a bit longer, whereas the one on the bottom is a bit shorter. Make sure you don't put them in the wrong way, because otherwise, if it's, you put the longer bolt on the bottom, it will push in against the actual rack itself and prohibit you from installing, installing it properly. Alright, now that we have the whole system, the whole racking system installed on here, we want to make sure that we tighten them to a certain extent, not too much, but so that we can still move the back plate up and down. But we tighten them to a point where they're at the right angle and right height that we would like them to be. 
Double check to see everything is lined up properly. And then we can finally screw it tight. You don't really need a torque wrench for this stuff. Um, just make sure that you finger tight it to a point where you feel safe and confident that the screws are not going to come, come apart. We don't include Loctite with the packaging. However, if you feel personally feel more comfortable having Loctite on these bolts, um, you're free, free to do that as well. Now, once the bolts are tightened right now, you can see that the whole system is already pretty sturdy and in place and it won't move around, but we have one more step to do before we finalize this. Now, the final step is these two push rods. These will push against the sides of the rack system to prevent this from sliding left and right, which you can see is happening right now. Let's do the left side first. So you put it behind. If you can move over here and you see that how it's pushing against the left side of the pannier, of the rack here. Make sure you try to avoid the two holes here because this these two openings are for installation of the basket system. So you can install it at a location where it's not really prohibiting against that. So now that I have the left push rod installed here, my personal preference, I usually like to have the right side offset a little bit. So I like to install it at the top. So I usually place it, place it somewhere around here where it's not, again, interfering with these two openings. And also having space here to find the bolt place, find the location for the bolts to get into. Once the two, two push rods are installed properly and in place, you should not see any sort of left or right sliding action um, from the back plate and it still does not interfere with the quick release system coming off as a whole. Again, quick release system is really fast. Simply make sure the bottom hooks are lined properly with the top in place and snap it into place. Once the back plate is installed and aligned properly according to preference, the next step is to get the basket system onto the back plate. To install the basket system onto the back plate, it's easier to remove the whole back plate off the bike and place it face down somewhere comfortable right you'll notice that the basket system has two hooks on the bottom two on the left two on the right side and two on the top this will match exactly with the openings on the bottom left right and top of the back back plate so let's make sure that everything is installed correctly putting the putting the basket face down we'll loop the bottom bracket through here Make sure it's in place and we'll do the same for all the other all the other seven a total of eight brackets no. now this is roughly on there right now but to make sure that these clips do not come out or get pushed back out of the back plate that's when the zip ties come in so you'll notice that every clamp around there there is a hole opening for the zip tie to go through using the zip ties we'll loop it through the hooks themselves as well as through the opening and when we come back we make sure we come back through that little hole but not through the hook itself this way the zip tie is binding the hook to the back plate tight pull it really tight and then use a scissor to call off the extra zip ties and that repeat that for all the other seven clips around and you should have the basket system installed correctly. So once we have the, all the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight clips installed and zip tied down properly, let's flip this around and get the basket and quickly system onto the racks again for a cleaner look this way. Now, remember how I unclipped the top two? Let's clip it back in just so you get a full idea of how the basket system looks. This system, again, it's fully adjustable in terms of how wide or how, bit, how deep it is. All the straps on it have Velcro attached to it, so once you pull things tight, you have the ability to make sure that the straps don't fly around in the wind and don't flap around, so you can always roll it up and just tie them down that way to make sure that they don't flap around in the wind. Right? Right? 
So next step after the basket is installed is getting the bag into the basket. Remember how we previously set up the bag already? Let's grab that over here and get the 30 inside. Once the bag is inside the basket system, then can you start adjusting all the straps that are here to make sure that it supports the bag properly. Pull it, pulling the bottom two tight first. Get it around, one, bottom right one. Pulling it tight here. And you'll see that the general support is already there. Making sure the top two are tightened. Again, this is left there for flexibility because once you have uh, content inside your bag, it may expand a bit. You may want to have more room or less room if you have nothing in there um, to make sure it holds its shape and form and looks a lot better on the bike. So right now, since it's empty, let's just pull it really tight, make sure everything's here. And then the top two here. So generally, when once the bag is on the bike, I like to make sure that when I roll, I triple roll inwards. Personal preference, you can roll outwards and inwards up to your pri up to your preference. Let's do it in words just for this scenario here. Exposure. Now, you see all these straps flying around, right? We can make quick adjustments using the roll-up method that I just showed you guys to make sure all the, all the straps are tight and Velcroed to the actual strap itself. And that's how clean it should look once everything's set up correctly. So the final step to the installation of the 3035 kit to have the dry bag installed inside of the, bag itself, of the main bag itself. Let's go. There's Velcro lined on both sides of it. And it'll match to the opening's Velcro here. The dry bag itself also Velcro closes. So for some that prefer to use the dry bag entirely, simply place the dry bag inside. Make sure that the liner here of the Velcro lines up with the opening's Velcro on both sides, push it tight, and now you can open the dry bag together with the bag itself for using the dry bag together. Otherwise, if you do not want to use it together and want to use the dry bag separately and store contents outside of it inside the bag, you can simply close the dry bag, roll it up, and we have clips here that can clip it tight. And now the dry bag can go inside and you have plenty of room to store other things inside as well. Now the Hassar 3035 system is quick releasable, but also lockable. Once the system is installed onto the, onto, the, onto the rack itself, and the clamp is fully closed, pressing the pin in will enable the quick, quick lock system to be locked up, and there is no way of taking it off directly. And also, the, for added layer of protection, remember how I said there was a cable lock option here? If you loop the cable lock through here, and through the back rack itself, the bag is now locked to the back rack as well. So the whole system is lockable to some extent to prevent theft and security reasons. So that's it for our Hassar 3035 series introduction, walkthrough, and installation video. The Hassar 3035 and 2628 kits come in four variants depending on different racks on the market. Some racks are 18 millimeters in diameter, some are 19 millimeters, and then there are racks that curve around the exhaust. So our variants match that with 18mm, 19mm, 18mm with exhaust dodging, as well as 19mm with exhaust dodging options. Make sure you make the right purchase. That's it for today. See you in the next one.